Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There's so many young peace out to the rest of you. You know who it is, the blackest heart, the blackest mind, the blackest man on social media, sign a black in and shining again. Asking you to hit that share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Here's the deal, y'all. Um, I'm not an enemy to Kevin Samuel, so I'm just saying this as a, a disagreement. Not as uh, an attack. And he's not going to see the video because, again, he's too famous. He doesn't know I exist. But I'm addressing you in the audience so that you understand what's missing from his take. Men should make themselves capable of fighting um, in order to defend themselves and to defend others, those for whom they're responsible. By the same token, uh, Men must not walk into traps. You see, if you go hunting for lions, and you don't find the male that you, you're looking for, you might make the sound of a lioness in distress. And so if the male lion does not show up, or if he shows up, but then he doesn't walk up to you, and he takes off running as if he knows it's a trap, it's easy for you to say, oh, he doesn't know it's a trap, he's just scared of the lions. It's easy to say that. Because <laughs> in your frustration, you're not going to say, well, I set the trap up to where he could figure it out, or he's smarter than I thought. You're going to sit up and say, oh, he's, he's scared of that punani, or he's scared of the lioness, or something like that, or he's just scared of whatever had her in danger, <laughs> and say that he's not a real male lion. The reality is he just was smart enough to not walk into the trap when the evidence was that it's a trap. The same thing is uh, applicable in this case. When that man, that father, in that car, with his daughters, was blocked in, that was a test that he did not know he was going to face. So he was not prepared. He can now go back home to his daughters and be prepared for the next one because he did not walk into the trap that first time. He knew it was a trap. He didn't walk into it. Granted, he was screaming and all that, and that might make him look bad in front of his daughters, but you know what? I, I'm pretty sure that somebody's not going to be able to pull this off on him again. It may not happen again, but if it does, they're not going to be able to pull it off. And I'm going to tell you all the situation that happened um, when I was, uh, this is about seven years back. And I was walking with my daughter in my childhood neighborhood. At that time, um, I was teaching in my childhood hometown, and I had her with me. And so I was walking through our childhood neighborhood with her, and um, I didn't leave the house until we took a stick to walk with. When, when I took the stick, she said, yeah, that's a good idea, Daddy. But my mother actually said, you think you're going to need it? And I said, yes, mom. For dogs, yes. She said, well, maybe so. I mean, they don't come after me and your dad. Well, see, the thing is that my dad is six foot two. Um, dogs do assess risk. And he and my mother are walking. I was walking. I'm not six foot tall. So when I walk, um, with my daughter, who was eight at the time, we looked like easy pickings. So we were walking. Sure enough, a dog came running down a driveway. I said to my daughter, okay, hand me the stick and get behind me. She handed me the stick, and I held the dog off with the stick. He tried to go around me to get to her, and he was fast, but because I had the stick, he couldn't get around me. He might have been able to get around me to get to her, 
because of his speed if I had not had the stick. It would not have been because I was not going to protect him. The thing is that the uh, owner of the dog, she did say, you know, I think he's, he's like this because of the way you're reacting. And I told him, no, ma'am. He was acting like this from jump because my daughter and I backed out of the property. Look how far we are from your house now. I did that so that he would know that we're out of his property. If he stops at that point, then he simply was defending his territory. At this point, he's now an aggressor because look how far he is from the territory. He wants to eat my daughter up. I'm going to kill your dog later if I catch him again because of that. I didn't hurt him, but he tried to go around me to get to when he couldn't. But I'm going to come, but now we're away from the property. It's not me, ma'am. It's your dog, and I'm going to kill him if I catch him again. And I'm going to walk past here again. So what I was pretty much telling her is that he has to be kept out of sight or I'm going to kill him. And I didn't pay attention to what she said afterwards because she grabbed him by the collar at this point. And uh, my daughter and I went up, went back home. I have since walked by that house every time I go back to the U.S. to visit. I've walked by with a stick waiting on that dog to come out. I have not seen him. The reason I'm telling you the story is because later on my daughter said, I'm so glad that you're not one of those guys that says save yourself. So glad you're one of those dads that stayed there and kept the dog back. And I told her, well, of course I am. I mean, it's what parents do. And you're my little chunky cheeks. Um, but understand, when I said to understand this, don't tell your mom I did it. And she said, okay, Daddy. So she agreed to not tell her mother that I did this. And her mother to this day does not know. Now, I had different reasons that I didn't want her mother to know about me doing what a dad would do. Um, and that's largely because she was not going to be appreciative of it anyway. So it's better that she not know because once she finds out and she still is not appreciative of it, um, I probably would have tried to get a dog to attack her one day. Not the daughter, but her mother. So anyway, um, what I'm getting at here is that that man was in a lose-lose situation. If he had run those folks over, he would have been in trouble. The video that we saw that proves that he was not the aggressor would have been erased, deleted. The cops would have done it the way that they've infiltrated law enforcement lately. <coughs> because it, it, a lot of the cops now belong to white supremacist organizations primarily. And we know what their attitudes are. And so they would have taken this video um, as evidence. Then they would have confiscated it and it would have never made it to the public. And we would be thinking that this man just drove over some white folks in a parking lot because he felt like it with his daughters in the car. And now here we are sitting up condemning this man for all that he didn't do. And I'm not going to join in on this for this reason. Should he have been better prepared? Yes. But once that happens, there's not a right way to go. There was not a right thing to do but to call the police. If you're not prepared already in advance, you have to call the police who are prepared for this. They show up. You know what? It does turn out to be your car and not whoever she thought it belonged to. Uh, do you want to press charges against her for obstruction or whatever the, the charge might be? Yes, I do. I need her name and info. I'm going to sue her in civil court after this. Um, I'm going to sue these men as well. Unfortunately, many of us are saying, oh, his daughters are traumatized because he had to call for help. And I, I didn't see the whole entire video, but the point is that they would have been traumatized if he had driven over them gotten taken to prison, they have the video evidence on the phone that he's innocent and it vanishes somehow because the police took the phone and erased it. And their dad goes to prison and now they're unprotected again. That's a lose-lose scenario. I told you, black America, a long time ago, starting with those of you who know me in my personal life, I told you all in the 90s, 
that white America wants to go back to the 1950s. That's what they're looking for. And I said this to you, and you all said that people like me were, I and people like me were insane. And I'm not going to forgive you for this black America. That's why I left you. One reason. I mean, this was a hatred for me, but one of the reasons I left America was because you don't deserve for someone to sit back and stay and try to wake your butts up the way that you are. And if you have changed since I've left, it's too late. I've lost major chunks of enjoyment out of my life in childhood and adulthood, caring about your stupid behinds and you being underprepared. Now, Kevin Samuels believes in being prepared. That's the good thing. That is where you take notes from him. But the fact that many of you are sitting up here arguing under his channel as to what this man should have done shows me exactly what I've been saying. There is no right answer to that test when they bring it on you because they're not going to spring upon you with tests for which there is a correct answer unless you have thought about it beforehand and prepared a correct answer that they didn't think about. That's the point. That lady didn't get up in front of his car because she thought he ain't going to do nothing. She got in front of his car because she thought she could trap him into doing something. And maybe she really thought that the car belonged to someone else. She's still stupid. She was out of bounds for doing it. Because the thing is that they feel they have jurisdiction over us. This is a, psych a, a subconscious psychological pro pro programming that they have. When a criminal looks like them, they need to involve the police. When a criminal looks like us, they need to become the police. This is a subconscious thinking uh, that they've got. They're not aware they have it at times. But when they become in tune with their inner races, then they might become more aware of it. So that being said, unfortunately, we're going to have to deal with a scenario um, in which they're setting traps, and if you don't fall into them, you're going to be told that you're not a man. Somebody tried this on me. It was another, you know, another brother. A Muslim cat, too, but he was trifling as hell. He didn't practice. Dude was uh, trying to get me to show up to fight him, and he later confessed that in actuality, um, some FBI agents had contacted him, and they said they had some stuff on him, but that they would let him, they would leave him be if he could get proof that I was somehow a latent terrorist. I think he made that up too because he's a pathological liar. But I do think that this was a trap that he tried to set up one time, try to bait me and goad me into going to fight this dude, and I'm a grown man with three kids. So um, it was time for me to go to bed anyway when I started seeing the first few messages, and I turned the phone off. I went to sleep because I had to go to work the next day anyway, right? And, of course, next morning I wake up, string of text messages, voicemail messages, you ain't no real man, you ain't fighting for your family, stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about, bro. What do you mean fighting for my family? It turns out he had designs on my wife. <laughs> yeah. He was telling my wife stuff about I was planning to leave her and things like that because he had designs on her. And I got on her later on for sitting up listening to this dude behind my back. I was like, oh, so he was telling you this and you sat there and, and listened to him in multiple conversations behind my back? That's one of the reasons that she's an ex. But the point I'm making is that People like to do this and set up traps because they know that we feel this need to prove because our manhood's been under attack, we've got to prove that we are men. I'm telling you that one of the best ways to do that is to get yourself into an environment where your manhood is not tested more than anybody else's just because you're black. That's the best thing you can do. Mr. Samuels, you're right that men should prepare to protect but I cannot agree with you when you say that black men should and must go out protecting people that they don't know. I've done this out of my own volition. I have been willing to do this for, for ladies that I don't know, ladies that I'm not related to. I've been willing to do this. But Mr. Samuels, you cannot go around telling young black men in America that they owe it to every lady they don't know to offer protection. How's it going? You can't in good faith tell them that because many of them are being asked to protect the same ones or those that are just like 
their own mothers that psychologically castrated them. You don't run nothing up in here. You ain't no man yet. Oh, I'm not a man yet. But, okay, so I have no privileges of a man. No rights of a man. But you want me to take the responsibility of a man and protect with my life. Are you effing kidding me? So when it's time to pay rent, you want me at 13 to be out there working a job to help you with the rent. Moving around heavy furniture when we got to move, all that stuff. But I got no rights of a man. That's exactly their relationship with us from the very beginning. So these young brothers, and, and I know because if my father had not been in my life, my really good mother would have done that sometimes. And she's a good lady, but you know what? She needed her husband to help. And not because my brother and I were unruly, but because there were things she just did not know. And my dad had stepped in sometimes and said, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. <laughs> now, they need to learn the responsibility, that's true. But they're going to do this in steps. Before we get to this level that you want them to take, we're going to get to the other level. Don't tell him to go out and get a job and then be out there working hard and they ain't paying him nothing. And my dad would turn him in. He'd say, okay, now you're old enough to legally go out there and get a job. You need to go out there and get it. But do not have them calling you up for overtime and all this other stuff to the point where it affects your studies. They're not paying you enough for that. So don't break your back and don't pick up anything that's too heavy or injure yourself on that job. Be careful because they're not paying you enough to, to injure yourself or hurt yourself. You're working to earn some money and to learn and get some work experience. You're not doing this uh, to be a cash cow for them. See, my dad brought that balance. That's one of the things he brought. We got young brothers growing up without this balance, and, it, and sometimes it's because dad just has to live somewhere away like I do. Other times it's because mom don't want him around. Just send the money and that's it. Fuck the shuck up. I don't want to hear that. And so these, these young brothers are being told to take on all this responsibility, but what is the reward? The reward is not going to come from the black community, Mr. Samuel. And celibacy cannot be the reward for protecting ladies. Now, it does not have to be a sexual reward. I'm not saying that. But celibacy cannot be the reward. In the black community, the man that is willing to offer this protection is the one that gets friend-zoned. And she doesn't just friend-zone him by herself. She introduces him to her friends as a friend. So now he's friend-zoned by the collective. Except, of course, for her ugly friends. That's what happens among us. If he dies in her defense, she's not taking care of his family. He just dead. Now he's not there to protect his own wife and kids or provide for them. And they're just out. That's it. That's what's being asked of us in order to prove that we're men. That's not fair, sir. In order to be able to do this, we have to have something that levels the playing field. And I do believe in what you say that we should prepare for these things. In order to prepare, Mr. Samuels, and those of you that listen, realize that preparation requires forward thinking. We are a people that don't value that, and we consider you crazy if you think forward. I know, because in 1990, I became aware of something, and I was only a teenager. I became aware that white America wanted to go back to the so-called good old days of the 1950s. And before that, I became aware of this. I told my people, they want to go back to these days. How did I know? I've been to, you know, I've been to school with them. I've uh, been able to spy on them even accidentally in many cases. They just felt comfortable talking about certain things in front of me. And so at the end of the day, I had to let them know you're different. We're different in their eyes. And they'll say, well, there's no difference. It's just color. No, in reality, they do see a difference. Even if they don't hate you, they see a difference. They want to go back to the so-called good old days. The good old days were bad for us. They don't fit for guff. They still want to go back to them. That's what they want. So I tell them this. I told them this. Told, my, told us this. And those who know me, especially from childhood, know that I was considered to be insane for telling my folks this. And therefore, um, 
I began to say, well, we're going to need to repatriate, go somewhere else, because this is not the same thing in every country you go to. Well, you know, exactly what I thought was going to happen is now playing out. White nationalism has become white internationalism. In other words, it was an American phenomenon for the most part. Now, like Malcolm said, no, that's not the case anymore. It's white internationalism because, see, it was first it was French nationalism. You know, German nationalism. That's what they had back in World War II. But, see, now you've got white nationalism on a global scale internationally. So, Brendan Tarrant, that got convicted in New Zealand, himself was an Australian. Is an Australian. He was... Um, he was influenced by people like uh, uh, Brevik, the one up in Norway, who was a white nationalist. They now want an international white Western civilization where they all see it the same way with each other. That's what they're looking for, internationally. I thought that was going to happen when I was younger, but I didn't, get, I didn't mention that because I figured it was going to take longer I figured if I can't get my people to realize that white Americans want to go back to the 1950s, I can't get them to realize this, so I'm going to fucking shuck up. And sure enough, what happens? They want to go back to the 1950s. They talk about make America great again. And, and now you've got this international rise of white nationalism. And Brendan Tarrant in New Zealand, who himself is Australian, has copycats in other countries. Check it out. Look it up. Dylan Roof was an inspiration to others, probably even to uh, Brendan Terrence. So you got to go through this preparation stage for which you're going to appear to be insane, just like Noah was considered insane when he built the ark. <laughs> just like Lot was uh, considered to be insane when he told his people to cut this mess out before God punished them for it. Just like Moses was considered to be insane when he told his people, if you follow these laws, you will get a promised land and a kingdom. And if you don't, you will be punished and you will be lost, literally, geographically lost. And they were. And they were defeated by the enemies. This is the same thing here. So what I'm saying, Mr. Samuels, and those who are uh, of the same audience, understand that in order to, in order to prepare yourself, to be able to defend the sisters. You have to go through a stage in which they're the ones who are mainly calling you insane and crazy, and if they are, why should they enjoy your protection when they derided you for making the preparations to be able to defend them when they need it? The ones of them who say, you know what, thank you for preparing, let me help you out. Hopefully we don't need this, but if so, they're the ones who enjoy your protection because they deserve it, and they'll probably be able to extend something to you in exchange. Not the ones that sit back and talk about how all kinds of crazy you are because you buy guns and you learn how to handle them. Oh, you just a crazy gun nut. You just like them crazy white dudes. Oh, really? Okay, all right. When it hits the fan and you come to see me, you better hope you got TNA to pay for it. And y'all know what that is. And I'm not even of that mindset, but what I'm saying is that that's what a lot of men are going to be like. The ones with the highest IQs are actually going to be that way. Oh, now you showed up. Well, let's see, you don't have, there's nothing you have that I want, so no, I'm not protecting you. But, 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 but nothing. You said I was crazy for even being able to do this today, so get out of my face. But they're coming down the street right now. Good, shove them out into the road. Here she go, walk in, lock the door. That's what's necessary. You need stuff like that in order to, to cleanse the community of dead weight. And I don't like thinking that way. But if, if you're making the preparations and somebody is just at the very least, they're silent, and then they ask, you're in a neutral position, you could extend or deny. But when somebody derides you for making the preparation, then comes to you talking about, I need your protection and you ain't no man if you don't do it, you have every incentive to throw them under the bus. I'm going to tell you now, this whole, when someone attacks your manhood, brothers, but you see no reward if you do extend the protection, that's a trap. That's all that is. 
And that's why it is that you should actually, if you're going to defend out of a sense of honor and just goodwill, you're better off doing it when nobody's looking at you to do it. Because when you're in a situation where you're being called out to do it or someone's looking at you to do it, that's when you should run because that's a trap. When it's unexpected from you, go ahead because no one's expecting it. It's not a trap. Because if you get the test thrown at you and you are unprepared, and then people are looking at you and goading you and eyes are on you, what you going to do? <laughs> then you're being set up. Just understand that. And you're being set up so that when something worse happens later to those to whom you actually do owe protection already, you won't be there to do it. That's how the game is played. The one telling you, you don't protect black women, they're not even playing chess. They're not even playing checkers. They're not even thinking. The one that's setting the trap for you is actually playing chess. So don't play checkers with them. I hope this is a benefit. I hope that one day this recording won't be necessary. The blackest of the black sign of blackout, as-salamu alaykum and black heterosexual male power specifically because they don't like it.